Ah, the sight of a burning candle. Nothing like it, huh? Everybody loves candles, don't they? So do I. I really love candles. Bet you can even smell that one too, can't you? You know that that's a birthday cake candle, huh? Smells fabulous. You can smell it baking in the oven. Well, a couple of years ago, I got sick and tired of paying people for candles, and I said to myself, how hard could this be? can't be that hard to make these things. Yeah, it might be a nice little hobby, and I bet you it's not too expensive. So, read a few things online, bought a few items, and next thing you know, I was making my own candles. Didn't take long, wasn't rocket science, and it was a heck of a lot cheaper than giving them to Yankee Candle or any of those other places. One day I went with Booter over to a, um, a uh, craft fair, and we sat in the booth and they showed us how to make them. I was like, damn, this is really easy enough. So, here I be, and this is how to make candles. The really exciting thing about this is, well, pretty much how unexciting it is. You can buy yourself some of these soy wax flakes. They're really inexpensive. Ten pounds run you about twelve bucks. No big deal. And you pour them into a Pyrex thing. I bet you have visions of, I don't know, slaving over a fire or something like that. Or some kind of double boiler or... I don't know. I don't know what you were thinking, but really kind of easy. You just take all these flakes and you fill up your Pyrex container. Okay, and then we'll grab it and run it on over to Mr. Microwave here. And we're going to let it sit in there for a couple of minutes. Told you how really unexciting this is. It's no big deal. Okay, this has been heating up here for a couple of minutes, and see, after a few minutes, it turns into this nice molten wax here, just like that. It's all liquefied. And then, what we did was we put some of the scent oils here in our jars that we're going to use. Save all your jars. I mean, they can be reused. Um, and I don't know why Yankee Candle or any of those other places don't reuse their jars. That's pretty not environmentally cool. And pour, pour, and pour. And we'll top this one up a little bit. Cool. And now once you got them in there, stir them around. Mix the scent inside so they smell all the way through and you'll light them up in your house. Using about, I don't know, half hour or so, they're going to look just like a candle. Stir, stir, stir. You don't have to color them. I mean, you can if you want to, but they sell some nice colors. Um, I don't know what any of them are, but it doesn't matter to me. They can be all clear. I know what they smell like. And now we're going to put them over here to the finish rack. And we're going to let them harden up for a while. See, and we got a couple that are already made over there in the corner. Alright, now those here, there's a sugar cookie. We got a couple here that are coconut cream. Those two in back are sea breeze. And that one over there is a cinnamon. And you can imagine what your house smells like on the night you're making candles of about 58 different smells. Make sure you take your sinus meds because they'll really light you up, but well worth it. Well worth it. I mean, I could make, I've already made uh, six, eight candles in a matter of just 10 minutes. And it's going to cost me a whole heck of a lot less than Yankee Candle will. And I'll light one up right here. So that's a vanilla candle. Everybody, everybody loves vanilla. Always trim your wicks, unlike I didn't do here, but it's always a good idea. Keep your wicks trimmed so you don't set your house on fire. Everybody be safe with your candles too. Make sure that you don't keep them lit when you leave the house, um, like we sometimes do. And um, you know, one of these days we're gonna burn down all these condos. But really, don't leave your candles unattended, okay? Because uh, you know, 
know, that could really turn into uh, an issue. And, you know, this is a great hobby for kids and whatnot, but, and, and kids can make the candles without parent supervision. It doesn't really take a, take a lot, but, um, but really tell them they can't light them until you get home. Okay, that's, that's really important. Because, um, you know, you don't want the kids searching the place either. Another batch over here that I'm getting started. Now, remember to follow the directions on the whatever they tell you on the uh, on the oils because you know everybody's temptation is, is to try to you know get more get more oil in there to make it you know the scent better and it will but the problem is, is too much oil can drown your candle um, and you'll know if your candle is going to drown pretty early um, you'll light it and it'll be burning for about 10 or 15 minutes and you'll see the See the flame start to peter out a little bit. And the flame peters out, you got so much oil in your candle. Um, so follow the directions, especially with soy wax, because with soy wax, um, while it accepts the oil pretty darn good, it's about 10% um, oil to 90% wax. So you know, if you stick to that, you know, you, you, you'll be pretty you'll be pretty safe. Um, you light the when you light the candle, you'll uh, pretty much have a good burn throughout it. And the good thing about soy wax is it's clean; it doesn't burn like petroleum wax. It's very environmental friendly. It'll come back. It grows with soybeans, and it doesn't stink up your house or make soot or you know grease all over your walls and stuff like that. So um, soy wax is always a good bargain for sure. All right, we're gonna put we're gonna put a wick in one of these here. Now they make these nice. I'll show you. Look like these nice pre-tabbed wicks that you don't even have to make yourself. You can just buy them. They're already made. But now the thing about it is that you can't just use any old any old kind. Wicks are very important to the burning of your candle. So you have to use the right kind of wick. And I get these six inch tabbed wicks and they're pretty specific for soy candles. And um, what you do is wait for your candle to cloud up a little bit because then that means there's a little bit of film wax developing in the bottom of it and when you do that then you'll have enough uh, base to position your candle in, uh, position your wick in. Um, you can buy tacky wax and squirt it on the bottom of your you know wick and pour the candle over and stuff like that and I mean I think that stuff's a rip off of one of those things. It's pretty hard to get out when you're washing your container out but this works just fine for us. You just stick it right there in the middle and look and the thing's gonna sit there just like that and you got a wick on a candle. So in about a half hour's time, we made about, I don't know, about 15, 16 candles. And I got the last ones over there, you hear the bell. And think about what you would have paid for that at, at uh, Yankee Candle. You look at these here, you probably would have paid, I don't know, pretty close to about $20, $25. And they didn't cost $20, $25 for like, all the wax I used and, and oils and everything. I mean, nowhere near it. Uh, I'd say probably on the average this cost about five bucks to make. So remember that it's an easy hobby. It's fun to do with a friend or kids or any you know anybody is a it's a great great hobby and um, well worth whatever you invest in it. One of the other cool things you could do with your candles is that they always make a great quick gift. I mean if you need a gift for somebody. Everybody likes candles. You can just make make an impromptu gift the night before. Let it sit overnight, and the next day you got yourself a present like somebody. You can make party favors or wedding favors or what have you. I mean, I've done that for baby showers for the kids and what have you. And it works out really good, and everybody everybody goes home with a little with a little gift, and um, and a lot of thought is put into it, and they're happy. If I pull it into the middle. Okay, here we have the expert wick fixer. Okay, she's always in charge of fixing the wicks after I put them in wrong. And so she is the specialist we call in to do the wick fixing. Make very, them in very, the middle. Yeah, make sure they're in the middle. Very, very important part of the process. Have your own private wick fixer.